Okay. Hey, fifth grade, this is Miss Harvey, and I'll be teaching you math today on April 7th. It's Tuesday. So you just heard the voice of a popular cartoon character. For today's challenge, you should email me the name of the character that was just speaking. The first person to email me the name of the character that was just speaking will earn one extra credit point on today's math class quiz. My email is dharvey at ebrook.org. Go ahead and email me now if you think you have the correct answer. The first person will get one extra credit point on today's math class quiz. Like I mentioned earlier, today is Tuesday, April 7th, so you should have in a separate tab on your computer opened up the lesson for math class Tuesday, April 7th. Your problem solving task in front of you should look like the one that I have on my screen. You should also have a piece of scratch paper and a writing utensil in order to write your answers down as you work. Pause the video here and gather your materials. Before we start class today, let's go over the outline for math videos so you know exactly what to expect. So we'll start off with you doing the problem solving task independently and you'll pause the video to do that. After you'll unpause the video to watch the discussion where you will engage by answering questions and checking the answers to your PST. After we're done with the PST, we'll take notes and you'll write them on a separate piece of paper where you started taking notes yesterday or you'll type them for yourself. After that, you'll pause the video and try the practice problems independently. Then you'll continue the video and check your work. And last, you'll take the exit ticket quiz that is on Google Classroom. The very last thing you should do each day is take the exit ticket quiz. You should not take the quiz without having done the PST, the problems for practice, and watching the video. For today's problem solving task, you are going to use your hierarchy that is in the fifth grade math class folder and your notes in order to answer whether or not these statements are true or false. And you're going to explain your reasoning for each. You should be working on numbers one through eight during this time independently. And then you'll come back to this video to check your work. Pause the video here and do that now. The only reason you should be continuing this video is if you have finished your problem solving task, you've written down your answers to questions one through eight on a separate sheet of paper, and you're prepared to share your answers. If that is not the case, you should pause the video again and keep working. If you have done that, we're gonna go ahead and start our discussion together. Before we discuss the answers to one through eight, I want us to review some of the definitions that we discussed when we were in school together and yesterday. So right now on the screen, I have the definitions for a lot of the terms that are gonna be useful for you to use when you are explaining your points. I want you to go ahead and read through these terms and become more familiar with them if you're feeling a little bit shaky on them or a little bit unsure. Then as we have our discussion, I want you to incorporate these words in order to explain your thinking. So right now, you're gonna read these definitions and familiarize yourself with them. Pause the video here and do that now. As we are using our discussion to determine whether or not the statements are true and false, I want you to make sure that you're making sure to incorporate the definitions for defining attribute, attribute, subcategory, and category. And as you push yourself to incorporate those words in your explanation, you'll find that explaining your thoughts gets a lot easier and it's backed up by mere math knowledge 
um, and anybody you explain it to will be able to understand what you're saying. So we're going to start our PST by talking about numbers one and two because they're pretty connected. So right now I want you to go ahead and reread statements one and two to yourself and then practice explaining your reasoning to another person or you can say it out loud um, to yourself. Did you say that numbers one and two were true or false and why? Pause the video here and do that now. Okay, let's go ahead and chat about numbers one and two. So for number one, the statement was, all parallelograms are rhombuses. We're gonna go ahead and try and use our shape hierarchy to determine whether or not this is true or false. I've scrolled down to my shape hierarchy and I'm gonna go ahead and start at parallelogram because I'm trying to determine whether or not all parallelograms will have to be a rhombus. If I look at the subcategories of parallelogram, I see rectangle is one subcategory and the other is a parallelogram with not all right angles. Who remembers what the defining attribute of a rectangle is? Exactly, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. I know that a rhombus is a parallelogram, but it does not need to have four right angles. Therefore, if a rectangle is a subcategory of a parallelogram, but a rhombus can also be a subcategory of a parallelogram, all rhombuses Sorry, all parallelograms do not have to be rhombuses because a parallelogram could also be a rectangle. Let's talk a little more about that. I know that rectangles have to have four right angles, but a rhombus does not have to have all right angles. So since a parallelogram can also be a rectangle, all parallelograms are not rhombuses. Parallelograms can also be rectangles. Here on our shape hierarchy, there's more than one subcategory for a parallelogram. Yes, a parallelogram can be a rhombus, but it can also be a rectangle. So all parallelograms are not rhombus, rhombi. Now let's talk about number two. All rhombuses are parallelograms. I want you to go ahead and read the statement that I have on the screen. In the blanks, I want you to determine which of our vocabulary words could be used to prove that this statement is in fact true. Pause the video here and give it a try. First, let's try to make sense of this with our shape hierarchy. We want to know if all rhombus are parallelograms. Here, I can see there's a larger category for parallelogram and that the rhombus is a subcategory of that category, parallelogram. So, the question is, are all rhombuses parallelograms? In my statement, I said that it is true, all rhombuses are parallelograms. What did you fill the blanks in in my statement? Rhombuses are a blank of parallelograms, so they share the same blank as parallelograms. The correct way to fill in this statement using our vocabulary words is to say rhombuses are a subcategory of parallelograms, so they share the same attributes of parallelograms. An example of that is rhombuses share the same 
attribute of parallelograms because all rhombuses have at least one set of parallel sides. If you are able to correctly place those vocab words in number two, awesome job. If you're still having a little bit of trouble with it, that's okay because we're going to practice some more with statements three through eight. So let's go ahead and move on. Next, we're going to do numbers three and four together. Reread statements three and four, and then go ahead and explain your reasoning out loud. Pause the video here and do that now. Statement three asked if all parallelograms are squares. As always, we're going to use our shape hierarchy to prove whether or not this is true. We want to figure out if all parallelograms are squares. I see that parallelogram is a larger category and the square is a subcategory of parallelograms. We want to ask ourselves, do all parallelograms have to be squares? What is the defining attribute for a square? If you said the defining attribute for a square is that it needs four equal sides and four right angles, then you're correct. So now we need to ask ourselves, do all parallelograms have to have four equal sides and four right angles? No, they don't. So this statement is false. Not all parallelograms are squares. Some of them are because a square is a subcategory of a parallelogram, but not all of them will be squares. I want you to think of an example that proves this reasoning true. How can we prove that not all parallelograms are squares? Give me an example. We can prove that not all parallelograms are squares because a parallelogram could also be a rectangle. And a rectangle does not have four equal sides. So a rectangle has different defining attributes than a square. It is not a square. So because a parallelogram can also be a rectangle, that means that not all parallelograms are squares. Some are squares, but a parallelogram can also be a rectangle. Number four said all squares are parallelograms. This statement is true. And here's where I want you to help me out. I know this statement is true, but I don't know how to explain it. What explanation would you fill in the blank with in order to prove to me that this statement is true. All squares are parallelograms. Remember to try and incorporate some of your vocab terms. Pause the video here and try. What did you say for your reasoning? How can we prove that all squares are parallelograms? Based on the shape hierarchy here, I can see that the square is a subcategory of a parallelogram. So what does that mean? That means that squares share all of the attributes of a parallelogram. Therefore, all squares are parallelograms. What attribute of parallelograms do squares have? The answer is that all squares have two sets of parallel sides, and that's the defining attribute of a parallelogram. So because a square shares that defining attribute, then all squares are parallelograms. Next, I want you to go through the same process with numbers five and six. Go back and reread the statements and try and explain your thinking using vocabulary terms and your shape hierarchy. Pause the video here and do that now. Let's go ahead and talk about number five. Number five asked whether or not 
all trapezoids are rhombuses. To start, I need to look at my shape hierarchy and I need to remind myself for the defining attributes of a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with at least one set of parallel sides, meaning that a trapezoid can have only one set of parallel sides or it can have more. What are the defining attributes for a rhombus? Well, we know a rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal sides. Because it is a parallelogram, we know that it must have how many sets of parallel sides? Two, you're right. So a rhombus must have two sets of parallel sides. So are all trapezoids rhombuses? No. This statement is false because a trapezoid can have only one set of parallel sides and therefore that trapezoid would automatically not be a rhombus because a rhombus needs to have two sets of parallel sides since it is a parallelogram. We used our shape hierarchy in order to prove that and we backed it up by using the definitions and our keywords. Number five is false because a trapezoid does not have to have two sets of parallel sides, while a rhombus must have two sets of parallel sides. For number six, I want you to read the statement I have here, and I want you to determine what words could go in the blanks. Pause the video here and do that now. You should have said that this statement is true because all rhombuses are a subcategory of trapezoids, which means that rhombuses share the same attributes as trapezoids. So all rhombuses are trapezoids. Now we're going to do the last two statements, number seven and eight. Go ahead and review what you wrote down initially, and I want you to go ahead and double check your work, whether or not you're still agreeing with what you already wrote down, and practice explaining your reasoning. Pause the video here and do that now. Number seven asked us whether or not all trapezoids are rectangles. What is the defining attribute for a rectangle? A rectangle is a parallelogram that has four right angles. What is the defining attribute for a trapezoid? A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with at least one set of parallel sides. So are all trapezoids rectangles? This statement is false. Tra all trapezoids are not rectangles because the defining attribute for a rectangle is that it must have four right angles and that is not a defining attribute for a trapezoid. Meaning that because the trapezoid does not have the same defining attribute as a rectangle, all trapezoids do not have to be rectangles. Some of them will be, but they could also have just one set of parallel sides, or they could also be a parale parallelogram with not all right angles. So not all trapezoids will be rectangles. Our last statement asked us whether or not all rectangles are trapezoids. I said this is true. Why is this statement true? This statement is true because rectangles are a subcategory of trapezoids, so they share the same attributes of 
trapezoids. So that ends our PST discussion. Now we're going to go ahead and take some notes. For notes today, you are going to copy down the definitions and the defining attributes for the terms that we reviewed at the beginning of class. So you are copying down on a separate sheet of paper or typing these into a document for yourself so that you can use them moving forward. Pause the video here so that you have them and you can write them down. The only reason you are continuing this video is if you have already written down your notes. If you have not, go back and write down your notes. Now that you have your notes, you should try the five practice problems independently. After you are done trying them independently, come back to this video and check your work. Pause the video here and do that now. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go over the practice problems that you just did independently. If you're noticing that you actually didn't do the practice problems independently first, then you should pause this video again and go back and complete them. So number one wanted us to select all of the trapezoids. Thinking back to what the defining attribute of a trapezoid is, I know that it must have at least one set of parallel sides. So in order to prove whether or not these were trapezoids, I had to do some work. And I had to extend the lines in my figures to determine whether or not they were parallel. When I did that for figures two and four, I determined that the figures had one set of parallel sides, or at least one set of parallel sides. So both figures two and four are trapezoids because they have at least one set of parallel sides. If you are doing this by just looking at the figures, that is not a sufficient strategy to determine whether or not something is a trapezoid. I want you to go back and try to draw these figures and extend the lines. If you notice that extending opposite lines meet, then that means that they are not parallel. But if you extend opposite lines and they do not meet, then that means that those two sides are parallel to each other. If you got this problem correct and you used the correct strategy, you're moving on with me. Sunny wants to know why rumbi are classified as parallelograms. First, let's go ahead and ask ourselves, what is the defining attribute for a parallelogram? Well, a parallelogram is a trapezoid with two sets of parallel sides. So if a rumbi is also a parallelogram, then it has to share all of the attributes of a parallelogram. I know that a parallelogram has four sides because a parallelogram is also a quadrilateral. So this statement is true. Parallelograms do not need to have all equal sides, so the second statement is false. Parallelograms need at least or need two sets of parallel sides. So if a rumbi is a parallelogram, that means that it also has parallel op opposite sides. And last, both rumbi and parallelograms have opposite sides that are equal. A rhombi has four sides that are all equal. And a parallelogram has opposite sides that are equal. For example, an example of a parallelogram is a rectangle. And in rectangles, the opposite sides are equal. Rachel and Peter are playing a guessing game with 2D shapes. Rachel says, I'm a polygon with all congruent sides. 
we want to select all of the shapes that Peter could choose to be Rachel's shape. We have a new vocab term here, and that is congruent. Congruent sides mean they are equal sides. So if it is a polygon with all congruent sides, it is a polygon with all equal sides. What's a polygon we've talked about that must have all equal sides? If you said a square or a rhombus, then you're correct. I circled these two figures because based on the way that they are drawn, they're the only ones that I can identify as squares. And so I know that a square must have all equal sides. We have not really discussed triangles yet and whether or not they need to have all equal sides. So we can't accurately pick that. We also have not just talked about pentagons yet. So we cannot accurately pick that. And I know that a rectangle does not have all equal sides. Only the opposite sides in a rectangle are equal. Wanda draws a square. She wants to know why a square is a type of quadrilateral. Which property explains why a square is a type of quadrilateral? All squares are hexagon and hexagons are quadrilaterals. Well, a quadrilateral has four sides and a hexagon has six. So this statement is incorrect. And it cannot possibly be our reasoning. All squares are triangles and all triangles are quadrilaterals. Again, quadrilaterals have four sides. Triangles have three. So triangles are not the same as quadrilaterals. All squares are polygons and all polygons are quadrilaterals. Well, polygons can be a number of different shapes. Yes, polygons can be quadrilaterals, but there are also different types of polygons. Can you name one? Exactly, a polygon could also be a triangle, a hexagon, or an octagon. So not all polygons are quadrilaterals. And therefore, that doesn't prove why a square is a quadrilateral. The correct answer is all squares are rectangles, and all rectangles are quadrilaterals. Rectangles are a subcategory of quadrilaterals, so all rectangles are quadrilaterals. And squares are a subcategory of rectangles, so squares share the same attributes as rectangles. Which statement is true? A triangle is a quadrilateral. Well, again, a quadrilateral has four sides and a triangle has three. So a triangle is not a quadrilateral. A trapezoid is a triangle. A trapezoid is a subcategory of a quadrilateral. So it has four sides and a triangle has three sides. It's also not a subcategory of quadrilaterals. A rhombus is also a rectangle. The statement is false. Why is this statement false? Well, a rectangle has all right angles, but it does not have four equal sides, while a rhombus must have four equal sides. So a rhombus is not a rectangle because a rhombus needs to have four equal sides and a rectangle doesn't. The true statement is a parallelogram is always a quadrilateral because parallelograms are a subcategory of quadrilaterals, so they have the, the same attributes as quadrilaterals. 
If you're still with me at this point in the video, then you're in luck because right now I'm going to go ahead and give you the secret code in order to be able to access today's math lesson quiz. If you do not enter the correct secret code and exactly as I say it, then the quiz will not let you continue on. So listen carefully to what the secret code is. And before you email or call your teacher, make sure that you are inputting the secret code correctly. Today's math lesson secret code is Hawaii. H-A-W-A-I-I, -I, Hawaii. You must enter it in all lowercase letters, all small letters. Again, today's math lesson secret code is Hawaii, H-A-W-A-I-I. -I. Now, you are going to go ahead and take the exit ticket quiz for math lessons in Google Classroom. Remember, this is different than math review. You should be taking a quiz that is asking you two questions that are on the screen now. List the properties that all rhombuses share and list the properties that all rectangles share. Don't forget to enter your secret code at the beginning of the quiz in order to be able to access the questions. See you guys tomorrow. If you're feeling confused or you're feeling like you need a check-in, make sure you reach out to your teachers. Use your strategies and use your notes on your quiz. Can't wait to grade them.